Good to have you with us still. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the theme for today, and that's uh, the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery 2020. The focus on this day, as always, is to uh, increase the campaign to eradicate what is now known as modern-day slavery, uh, forced labor, trafficking, uh, child labor, and uh, the variations that come uh, with it. Uh, since 1949, the United Nations has marked the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery on this day to remind people that slavery violates basic human rights and raise awareness of modern uh, forms of slavery. Now, according to the International uh, Labour Organization, ILO, more than 40 million people worldwide are victims of modern-day slavery it's important to note at this point that uh, modern slavery is yet to be defined in law. However, it is an umbrella term covering practices such as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, forced labor, uh, debt bondage, forced marriage, human trafficking, uh, you name it, cohesion, de uh, deception, threats of uh, violence, uh, you know, ex it's any situation of exploitation of another human being is described as uh, modern day uh, slavery. So that's including child labor also. Um, yes, indeed, it, it, it does. It, it certainly does. Um, the date is basically to draw attention to this modern day uh, kind of slavery. Just recently, we're talking about Lebanon and the uh, Nigerian yeah. uh, ladies that were there. UAE, I mentioned the other day, um, a, a very good, or should I say, former friend of mine, uh, whose uh, sister graduated, did her national youth service, and then Pum, she went off to be a yeah. slave somewhere else for the next five years. I don't know if her time is even up a, uh, by now. It's a, one of the things, you know, I hope that we can talk about, you know, and that is the set for greener pastures um, and how it has played a very, very huge role in, um, you know, uh, modern day slavery or, you know, uh, allowing modern day slavery to continue to thrive in our societies. Unfortunately, women um, and uh, girls are, you know, very, very much, you know, a larger number of the victims of modern day slavery. There are people who would argue that um, slavery never really ended. It was only just modernized. It was transformed into different, you know, other forms. Yeah, it, it has know. existed um, in all societies across the world. Yes. Throughout history, History, it has taken different forms. The most well known and extreme form um, is the historical uh, slavery, uh, the transatlantic slave trade, which lasted for over 400 Hundred years, years uh, and saw millions of Africans captured, sold, and transported to the Americas and the Caribbeans. Uh, we know that, I mean, we talked about the Barbados. Uh, recently and their uh, history with uh, slavery and all of that. We also uh, know the situation in South Africa. Yes. Uh, we know what happened. In fact, almost all the African uh, countries have one form of uh, slave trade or, uh, or the um, other. Some, some other thing, you know, that is important to mention is um, how our uh, religions and traditions have also allowed some of, uh, you know, some types of modern day slaves to thrive, you know, because there's certain parts of uh, the world where it's still okay to marry underage girls, where, you know, it's still okay to um, get people, um, you know, to stay on the streets hawking uh, for their parents, you know, and, and the, these have been traditions, it has been parts of, you know, the Nigerian, you know, certain parts of Nigerian culture that have allowed these things to, to uh, thrive. Um, um, we, of course, you know, you know, I was reading earlier about what active roles that we can play to end modern day slavery. You know, it, it, it would have to do with, first of all, uh, changing the narrative with some of our very, very, you know, uh, well-known traditions. Um, having, you know, when a lot of us grew up, we had house helps uh, from, you know, certain parts of the country that were about the same age as us and they were expected to take care of us. Imagine a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old having to take care of a five-year-old as, you know, as a, as a house help. Um, that, yeah, that's and there's right so there. many forms of it even uh, 
today. And that's why it's still a day uh, that draws attention to how we can continue to work towards eradicating modern day uh, form um, a slavery. To talk more on this, we have uh, Ronald Kayanja now, the country director, UN Information Center uh, in Nigeria. Uh, thank you for joining us on The Breakfast. What does data tell us now where we are with the fight to eradicate modern day slavery? Thank you for having me. Good morning. Um, modern day slavery is complicated because it manifests itself in many ways. It manifests itself through child labor, very discreet in the dark world of trafficking of people for prostitution and other purposes. It manifests itself in the taking of people into forced labor, and this happens in a number of countries. So the, the, the data is difficult to find, but our colleagues in the ILO say we have at least 40 million people that are in forced employment, and probably up to 150 million children that are working in child labor around the world. So it is a big, huge problem. One of the problems is that it is uh, something that is happening in what you can call the underworld, the world of trafficking of persons illegally all over the world. It is a major problem. That's why a day like this is significant for us to create more awareness about this menace. All right, uh, let, let's also talk um, about, and it's one of the things that, uh, you know, I had spoken about before uh, you joined in, and that is, you know, certain traditions and religious beliefs and cultures that we have here in Nigeria and uh, here in Africa also, uh, that have permitted and given uh, space for modern day slavery to continue to thrive, uh, child marriage, forced labor, um, and the likes. Um, how, how are we doing with abolishing some of those traditions and those cultural um, um, parts of uh, our lives? That is indeed part of the problem. And as you know, there are a number of... Uh, there's some work, especially in Nigeria, around uh, the, the child rights law uh, that... Well, the laws are there, but I think the challenge here is enforcement. Uh, we need to enforce the laws. The other challenge that we have in Nigeria is the many Nigerians who go, who are deceived into going to cross into Europe to get jobs. We always bring back people, many hundreds of people from uh, the Middle East who have been suffering there for years because they were duped into getting jobs there. And most of these people that come back are from especially Edo and Delta states, especially young girls who are taken into prostitution rings. These are, I think the issue here is also to create awareness, to tell people that there are two things, like creating awareness about this, uh, the deception that goes on in this underworld of people trafficking. But the other thing is that we need also to on improving the lives of our people so that when you go graduate, we see university graduates, uh, young girls from universities looking for jobs. They, they are deceived to go into the Middle East or other places for jobs. Let us create an environment in our country that will not force people to go out to, uh, uh, to look for these dangerous, uh, in these dangerous expeditions looking for jobs. You see, you cannot have um, droplets of prosperity in a world of poverty. And you think by certain economic osmosis, people will not be attracted to those places. That is what we, the campaign we are on, on the Agenda 2030 and Sustainable Development Goals is for the whole world. We need to improve lives everywhere so that there is not so much a drive for people to venture into going to other countries to seek a better life. We All need right. to build a, a good life here for our people so that they, we reduce the interest of taking those risks to go and get jobs elsewhere, falling into the hands of these this, uh, dangerous uh, uh, rings no. that are taking our people. So that is one. The second thing is uh, we need to enforce laws um, 
to companies, manufacturers, and so on. And we are starting to do this on the big multinational companies to be able to find where whatever product you are selling comes from to ensure that in the value chain, you don't have young children working there. We have many young children, hundreds of thousands of them, child labor exploitation in the DRC. Okay, I, I was going to talk about And they about are mining that. diamonds and all uh, gold and so on. Ronald, being taken I, I'm to actually Europe. trying so, to get your attention to talk about uh, the, I mean, to get you to talk about the children in this case. Um, um, statistics show that one in four victims of modern day slavery are children. My question would be, are we failing our children? And what is your assessment of the work that's been done by governments and non-governmental organizations to er towards eradicating um, modern day slavery? Ronald, did you get We are not doing enough, especially when it comes to uh, child labor. We can do more when it comes to child labor. And that's why I was saying that we need to enforce uh, requirements, especially for multinational companies, to ensure that there is no child labor in their value chains. You should not buy product from countries where they are using children to produce them, and then you go and improve them in your value chain and make profits. That is not profit. That is not sustainable profit. That's not sustainable value. So we need to stop it at source to ensure that you don't buy products that you have not checked this, the production value chain. And that is one way we can stop child labor. Otherwise, we have millions of children being exploited around the world into the mining industry, into the agriculture sector, and we need to stop it. Ronald Kayanja, how do you convince a person whose religious beliefs um, make it okay to marry an underage uh, uh, girl? How do you convince that person that that is, you know, some form of modern day slavery and um, should not be allowed? How do we fight um, religion and law and, of course, these uh, things that we're speaking about this morning? Uh, that, hello, that is the challenge we are facing in a number of countries, and that is something we are working on. Um, we, it's important to engage the religious leaders. It is important to engage the cultural leaders. And in Nigeria, we are seeing changes uh, as we work with the uh, traditional leaders. We are working with the religious leaders. We are seeing changes. We still have challenges of uh, uh, child marriages, and, and, and Nigeria has that as a big challenge. But the key here is engagement. You can use legislation, but it's more engagement, uh, talking to the leaders, the cultural leaders, and the religious leaders. It is always tough to change culture, but we cannot stop. It, it is like what we, fa we faced with the female genital mutilation. These are cultural practices. It has taken us years to make the, um, the progress we are making. So it is not easy. But, but we, we, we continue the engagement. All right. One of the slides, as you were talking, um, that, uh, that is scrolling on, has the fact that women and girls are disproportionately, um, disproportionately, okay, now sometimes <laughs> you just have to find a way to get the words out, uh, they're not they, they're affected by forced labor. Um, um, the scenario where women and young girls will fully accept to go into uh, forced labor, especially when it comes to commercial um, uh, sex uh, trade. Um, how can you begin to talk to these people, encourage them to not put themselves at such risk when the economic realities in their uh, base is you know, pushing them to the world? That, that you are making a very important point. We have, um, as I said, that is one of the challenges that we are facing. Um, and it's not only in Nigeria, in many parts of, of Africa. You 
we, we have had to do programs and campaigns to show people what happens uh, in the underworld of people trafficking and sexual exploitation. And we go and tell, talk to communities. But still, the next day you hear of young people going, um, make, taking these very dangerous journeys. The solution, as I said, is to improve our lives from source, from the base, so that the person does not have so much an attraction to go to for prostitution in Europe or to be deceived to go and to work in a hair salon in Spain or Italy. That's what they tell them, that we are taking them to work in a hair salon or so things like that. The challenge is the push factors are so strong. If your economic uh, situation is not good, so we need to remove this, and that's why our efforts on the sustainable development goals to reduce inequalities, to end poverty, to ensure people have employment, people have good education. This is what will solve this to an extent. It is very difficult, as I said, for people to be seeing a world of prosperity when they are dying in a world of poverty, for them not to try and go to that place. But we can change our countries. Countries in Asia have done this. We can do it. Uh, you, have, you see many, 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 the pull factors are not so much there in Asian countries, in Malaysia and other countries. People have a much better quality of life. We can do it in Africa. We just need to work harder uh, to make sure that our people at least get a minimum quality of decent life so that there is not so much a desire to take dangerous journeys. You've seen pictures of Nigerian girls uh, being sold in, in some countries. This is very much abhorrent. It's not something we should uh, encourage. It's not something we should allow to happen in this day and age. But one way of dealing with this is to ensure that our young people get decent employment, to create an economy that works for everyone. If we don't do that, it's difficult for you to just tell them stay around when there's nothing for them at home. And they are seeing all the time that there's a better world out there, which sometimes actually doesn't turn out to be better. They end in very dangerous, uh, uh, these cartels of uh, traffickers. So really what we need to do is to work hard and improve our countries for our young people. Um, I've, I've also just seen one of the slides there saying, you know, it's a $150 billion uh, industry um, um, across the world, you know, which might also make it more difficult uh, to fight or make it, you know, harder to also defeat because, you know, the, the money that is involved in some of these things is just mind blowing. Um, I can't imagine what you know, what, what the lives of people who have found themselves in different continents or in different um, countries entirely being forced into sexual exploitation and into, you know, um, uh, slavery generally, uh, what those lives are like and if, you know, if they would ever be better. Um, Ronald, please quickly talk to us about what the United Nations is doing um, in partnership with countries in Africa, maybe Nigeria in particular, um, to help put an end to modern day slavery and to help at least uh, uh, reduce the figures that we have of people uh, who are being trafficked and people who are in forced marriages and, and child labor and, and the likes. Yes, we, in fact, this day we, there is um, a declaration by the International Labor Organization that want, we want uh, all the countries of the world to adapt to end child labor in all its forms. We have fought this issue of child labor for a number of years and we've seen improvement. And there are many companies, for instance, uh, that now cannot uh, manufacture their products from some places because of this, but we need to do more. And we are working on a declaration actually uh, this year on that around the world. And that is about uh, child labor. On the issue of illegal migration, uh, and that includes the trafficking of persons and so on. We are working with the various agencies and, uh, of the government of Nigeria to deal with this. Um, it is complicated, as you said. It is uh, absolutely uh, difficult because of the lots of money involved, the cartels involved. Uh, it's a bit like the, 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 the illegal drugs um, uh, uh, industry. 
So we are working with the various uh, agencies of government building their capacities also to handle this. We are seeing some progress, but as I said, the push factors are very strong. The push factors are very strong. So you can work on the agencies that help to stop people going out or being deceived uh, in, into this slavery. But you also need to make their lives here much better so that the, the thought of taking dangerous journeys is reduced. All right. Let, so, so that is the other thing that we, we really need to, to work on. And that is why for us, uh, implementing Agenda 2030 and the SDGs is a key priority uh, for, for Nigeria and for Africa. All right. I, I want to take you back to something you, I want to take you back to something you said earlier. You talked about, you know, give an instance rather of a young woman being sold online in modern day slavery. I want to ask you, um, is there any interest by the UN and other bodies on the role played by social media in inflaming the passions that, uh, you know, move towards desperation uh, among young people to uh, engage in illegal uh, migration and going to forced labor? We know places like Instagram, you see very flashy lifestyles. You see people probably um, who don't seem to be working, but they make a lot of money. And then you see people who have left the country, they tell you the story of how they suffered on the way and how now they're living the good life. So is there an interest by the UN and other bodies on the role played by the internet in encouraging modern day slavery? That, that is another very important area that you are, you are talking about. And the Secretary General has had a, a, a panel on uh, what we call a panel on digital media. Uh, which is uh, where we have all the big players, the people, the Twitter, all the companies. And one of the areas that we are discussing with them is how we can um, interrupt, intercept, because most of these transactions go on social media being used by these groups uh, to encourage people, telling them how they can be taken from one country to another. Yes, we have a, a, a big um, uh, initiative working with the big companies to make sure we can spot this. Uh, it's like how we are working with the big companies on pedophiles, for instance, people who deceive young people on uh, using the social media, trying to uh, deceive them. They are going to bring them this. They are going to take them to these places. Yes, that is the place we are. That is an area that we are engaging with the big uh, companies, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, we hope that we can have design uh, initiatives that can help us detect and deter uh, because this is where it happens these days. And, and, and like it happens in, on other uh, ills of society like terrorism and others. So the digital media is being used and the United Nations is very much working on this uh, okay. with our digital, um, uh, uh, digital group. Right. In the time that we have left, I think we can take maybe two more questions. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to ask about your assessment of the work being done by NAPTIP. We just um, um, heard the news that a new um, director has been appointed for, the, uh, for NAPTIP. Uh, we also know there are other bodies like the Diaspora Commission, what they are doing to help um, Nigerians who find themselves in forced labor. What's your assessment of the work that they are doing and what areas do you think that they can improve on going forward? Uh, especially NAPTIP, we work with them closely on these issues. And uh, NAPTIP does a great job. They do a, a, a great work. And as you know, it is some of these, uh, uh, it, it is some people from NAPTIP whom we go and take on to support our other work in the UN. They are doing a good job. And um, what I think is that they need more facilitation. They need more, um, uh, NAPTIP needs a bit more funding to do the work they are doing. They have helped a lot. Um, in intercepting, uh, uh, there are many cases where they have intercepted these rings 
uh, trafficking rings, and uh, we work with them closely. But what I think is that they should be funded a bit more. The Diaspora Commission also, uh, but the Diaspora Commission is mainly uh, working with the uh, people in diaspora on how they can invest here. But I think it's, uh, it's also a platform that can be used, especially by Nigerians in the diaspora, to speak to the Nigerians here, especially the young people, about the, what they are going through. So it's not just uh, crossing the Mediterranean and you find yourself in Spain and you think your world will change. So I think we can use the, that, that uh, Diaspora Commission more as a platform to, to, uh, to, to work against uh, the inflow of illegal migration. But I must commend that uh, we work with them. They are doing a great job, but we, I think they need, uh, they would need a little more. The task is huge. Intercept this ring, there's another ring, and uh, those rings are well funded. There's a lot of money involved and deceptions and so on. We need to create more awareness about uh, whatever is going on. But even at state level, I would like to commend uh, 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 the people in Edo and on and, and Delta states uh, because that's where, uh, for some reason, we've had many uh, young girls coming back uh, who had been trafficked into um, parts of the Middle East and so on. But there are projects there also to enable them to live better lives and those who are back from those places to be integrated back in society. So right. we can do a lot even at state uh, level and other levels of the, or, 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 of the administration to right. ensure that we support young people and we encourage them to stay in Nigeria and not to venture into those dangerous trips. Yeah, Ronald, um, lastly, I, I want you to quickly speak on uh, the need to uh, uh, enforce more, you know, maybe you know, strongly the Child Rights Act um, and um, other laws in, in the Nigerian space that should protect children better. Um, how much more would you suggest that the government needs to do to ensure that these laws are put into use um, in its entirety? That's another important area because the child rights law is there and uh, it has not been domesticated in some states of the Federation. That should be done uh, very fast. And um, uh, the provision of the laws, because you know you have some good laws, but um, uh, still you need people to understand them, people to understand the rights of children. Um, uh, so we need those laws to be understood but also we need them to be enforced. Uh, we need uh, the structures that are created in the laws to be financed and in place, and also very important for them to be domesticated. The states all over the Federation should take interest in this. Uh, and that would really help a lot uh, in, in protecting our children. We, 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 we have a lot of vulnerabilities around children, especially on this issue of exploitation. You look at all the young people instead of, the, these young children, instead of going to school, they are just walking around selling stuff for some other individual. That is child exploitation. All right. You are making them work for you instead of them going to school to look for a better future. This right. should not be supported. So, and the law is there. So we need a stricter enforcement of the law. We also need the domestication of the laws at all levels of the administration in the Federation and we need financing for those areas that the law stipulates. All right, uh, Mr. Ronald to, Kayanja, to Country Director, UN Information Center in Nigeria. We thank you very much for joining us uh, to uh, create more awareness about the need to end modern day slavery. Thank you very much for having me, uh, Plus TV Africa. It's our pleasure. I was, I was actually going to, um, just before you spoke about Julio Cardonley, it was one of the things that I was thinking, oh, um, it's an important uh, perspective, you know, now that she has been replaced, um, you know, we're expecting, you know, uh, the same more energy work. from NAPTIP, you know, more work for NAPTIP, uh, will anything be different? Um, I, I want to encourage, you know, the body and hope that, you know, they can continue to do the work that they do. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, he also spoke about and I f that I feel is very important is, 
Um, we need a lot of work with re-enlightenment with regards to our cultures and our religious and our traditional, uh, traditional beliefs. Um, that's where a lot of, you know, the challenge is here in Nigeria. Um, there's also a challenge with poverty that, you know, if you don't, you know, kick away, then you, you almost, you know, are going to keep going in circles, fighting, um, um, uh, trafficking and, and um, you know, f people fleeing the country, searching for greener pastures. Yeah, um, uh, we're talking about the, um, the reason I asked the question on social media, um, uh, internet influence. I, I want to quickly um, add my voice to the commendation for NAPTIP. I had a very impressive interaction with them when I was in Benin uh, some years back, and the speed of response, the access, you know, there was no unnecessary bureaucracy to get information and get the assistance to victims that, uh, I think uh, one or two victims at a time uh, that we, um, we were made aware of. And yeah. uh, since then, I've always had this huge respect for the work that NAPTIP do. So uh, congratulations, at least there is an institution. They're not perfect by any means, but they are working and we see that they are working. So well done to NAPTIP and we hope that the new um, uh, managing director uh, does uh, a better work, amplifies what is already on the ground with helping Nigerians who find themselves in these unfortunate uh, circumstances. Now, the reason I asked the question about um, the internet influence, um, I strongly, I could be wrong, that beside the economic challenges, the, the unhealthy desire for the affluent life without really putting all the work that is needed, you just think you suffer for a tiny bit of time and you enjoy for the rest uh, of your life without the necessary background. You see some of these young people that embark on this have inadequate education. In the first instance, to embark on such journey, when they get there, they still do many jobs and then they work there for many years and then they come back home. I know of a few who've worked for some 30 years they didn't take the opportunity to improve on their educational qualification, whereas there are those who went there on very low um, a background and improved on their education and became uh, something. So basically, I think that the flashy lifestyle being spread um, on social media, the fast wealth, and the um, seeming um, celebration of people who you don't see what they do to earn a yeah. living, but influencing the, what some the truth gullible, is, very gullible young Nigerians The truth is, you, you, uh, you, can't, you can't stop that on social media. Of the, course the, not. The, I'm, I'm just pointing we, out we, we uh, that always, this has an influence. And yes, I does. guess the solution it, would be people um, paying attention to things that really matter. It's really about who we are. Because, you know, the same way there is a lot of the flashy lifestyle and wealth and all of that on social media. There's also information on modern day slavery. There's information on, on trafficking on, on social media. So if you choose to ignore those ones and still take that risk, you then it's really You see what you want to see. You yeah. see on Instagram sometimes, if you, if you, uh, you have the penchant to look for certain things, they begin to suggest more yes. of those to you. Same thing with Twitter. Same thing with Facebook. Everywhere. I'm not on Facebook, but same thing at, at the time I was there. If you have something, and the ads are becoming even more, you know. So, yes, people need, uh, young people particularly, need to understand that all that glitters, I know it's Doesn't a cliche, go. but all that <laughs> glitters is not gold. And for those who send their young children to go and stay with one auntie or one uncle somewhere, and you don't know how your child is being treated, well the long arm of the law will catch up with you uh, in no distant time. And that's Hello. it for today. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.